everyone our today's topic is tibia the tibia is a long bone it is the bone of the medial side of the leg and its function is to weight transmission in this video we're going to discuss about the anatomical points features uh, attachments relations ossification and in between the discussion we'll mention the important questions for your examination so how to hold it in anatomical position this is the upper end which is expanded than the lower end so the upper end is directed upwards this border this is called uh, this is the anterior border this is sharp so the sharp anterior border is directed anteriorly and this is the medial malleolus which projects downwards from the lower end so this medial malleolus is directed medially so for the anatomical points we have to say that the upper end is expanded and it's larger than the lower end and it is faced upwards the sharp anterior border is directed anteriorly and the medial malleolus is directed medially so this is the right tibia now come to the features as it's a long bone it has an upper end a lower end and an intervening shaft the upper end has a medial condyle, a lateral condyle, and an intercondylar area and a tubercity. The tubercity has a upper smooth part and a lower rough part. And the come to the shaft. The shaft has three borders and three surfaces. The anterior border extends from the tibial tubercity to the anterior margin of the medial malleolus. So this is the anterior border. This is the medial border. Uh, the medial border extends from the medial condyle to the posterior margin of the medial malleolus. So this is the medial border. And the lateral border or interosseous border extends from the lower part of the lateral condyle to the anterior margin of the fibular facet. So this is called the lateral border. Now come to the surface. This is the medial surface which is in between anterior and medial border. This is the lateral surface which is between the anterior and lateral border. And this is the posterior surface which is between the medial and lateral border. The posterior surface is marked by a rough bony ridge which is called the soleal line now come to the lower end the lower end has five surfaces this is the anterior surface this is the posterior surface this uh, this is the medial surface which extends downwards with the medial malleolus and this is the lateral surface which contains the triangular knots uh, which is called the fibular knots and this is the inferior surface which articulates with the superior surface of the talus in associated question you might be asked what is the importance of the anterior border of the tibia the anterior border of the tibia is also called the shin the importance of the shin is it is the most superficial part of the inferior extremity it is a uh, important bone landmark and it is a common site of injury the injury of the shaft of the tibia usually happens at the junction of medial to third because uh, it is most slender in this position and in another question you might be asked what is the superficial parts of the tibia the superficial parts of the tibia are tibial tubercity sharp anterior border or shin medial malleolus the medial surface which is subcutaneous and the medial condyle so another importance is of the medial surface is below the, the children below two years old the bone is punctured from here to collect the red bone marrow and another importance is bone grafting can be done by from the medial surface come to the attachment the capsular ligament of the knee joint is attached to the upper end and the peripheral surface of the condyles is attached to the medial uh, to the medial and lateral meniscus in this figure we can see the medial and lateral meniscus is attached to the peripheral part of the condyles and the intercondylar area the attachment of the intercondylar area is very important for your examination so from the figure we can see uh, from, from above downwards the attachment is anterior horn of the medial meniscus anterior cruciate ligament anterior horn of the lateral meniscus 
posterior horn of the lateral meniscus, posterior horn of the medial meniscus, and posterior cruciate ligament. This attachment is very important. In associated question, you might be asked, what is meniscus? The meniscus is a fibrocartilaginous disc which intervenes between the tibia and femur. What is the function of uh, what is the function of meniscus? The meniscus helps to deepen the articular surface. Then the meniscus helps in uh, meniscus acts as a shock absorber. The meniscus helps in angular and gliding movement, and it helps to lubricating the uh, joint capsule. So um, and another attachment is. Uh, semi membranous muscle is attached to the posterior aspect of the medial condyle. We can see the attachment. Another important attachment is the anterior surface of the lateral condyle has a flattened impression which gives attachment to iliotibial tract. In associated question, you might be asked what is iliotibial tract? Iliotibial tract is the thickened form of deep fascia on the lateral surface of the thigh. What is the importance? The importance of the uh, iliotibial tract is is it helps to keep the knee in extended position and it exerts an anti-gravity force to support the knee joint in walking and running function and the attachment in the tibial tuberosity is the ligamentum patelli which is in which is attached to the lower rough area of the tibial tuberosity and this ligamentum patella is originated from the tendon of the quadricis femoris muscle so this is done then the come to the attachment of the shaft the upper upper part of the medial surface of the shaft gives attachment to certain structures which is very important for your examination the attachments are from before backwards hockey stick like or inverted j shaped attachment of the sartorius muscle linear insertion of the gracilis muscle and linear insertion of the semitendinous muscle this attachment of these three muscles is very important because these three muscles are collectively known as guy ropes in question you might be asked what is guy ropes uh, this three muscle uh, stabilizes the hip joint because this uh, they originate from three different parts of the hip bone that is sartorius muscle is originated from the ilium the gracilis muscle is originated from the pubis and the semi tenacious muscle is originated from the uh, ischium and this three muscle has three different nerve innervation and they are the muscles of three different compartment of the thigh. So this is very important. And in another question you might be asked, what is the another name of sartorius muscle? The another name of sartorius muscle is Taylor's muscle because it helps in sitting position. So let's come to the attachment of the lateral surface. The upper three fourth, upper two third of the lateral surface gives origin to tibialis anterior muscle, as you can see here. Only this. And come to the attachment of the posterior surface. The posterior surface is divided into an upper part and a lower part by a rough ridge that is called the solial line. The muscles that originate above the solial line is the popliteus muscle. In question, this is very important that what is the peculiarities of popliteus muscle. In general, we know that muscles originate from, uh, the origin of the muscle is fleshy and the insertion of the muscle is tendinous. But in case of popliteus muscle, the origin is tendinous and the insertion is fleshy. So this popliteus muscle is peculiar and the nerve innervation of the popliteus muscle is the tibial nerve. The area uh, below the solial line is divided into lateral and medial parts by a vertical ridge. So the lateral part gives origin to tibialis posterior muscle and the medial part gives origin to flexor digitorum longus muscle. Then the solial line gives origin to soleus muscle and apart from soleus muscle it also gives attachment to the fascia covering the soleus muscle, the fascia covering the popliteus muscle and the superficial transverse fascial septum. 
then come to the lower end. The lower margin of the lower uh, medial meniscus gives attachment to the deltoid ligament, and the lower margin gives attachment to the capsular ligament of the ankle joint. Now come to the relation. A groove on the posterior aspect of the lateral condyle lodges with the tendon of the popliteus muscle, and there are some. Uh, some relations that are very important for your examination that are the relation on the lower part of the mm, of the anterior surface of the tibia the relations are tibialis anterior muscle extensor hallucis longus anterior tibial artery deep perineal nerve extensor digitorum longus and perine perineus tertius muscle you can memorize it by a mnemonic that is a hospital or dirty place a hospital R for tibialis anterior, hospital for extensor hallucis longus, R for anterior tibial artery, dirty for deep perineal nerve and extensor digitorum longus, and place for perineus tertius. The relation of the posterior surface of the lower part of the posterior surface are from medial to lateral, the tibialis posterior muscle, flexor digitorum longus, posterior tibial artery tibial nerve and flexor hallucis longus. You can also use a mnemonic for this, that is talented doctors are never hungry. Talented stands for tibialis posterior, doctor stands for flexor digitorum longus, R stands for posterior tibial artery, never stands for tibial nerve and hungry stands for flexor hallucis longus. And the junction of lower third of the shaft of the uh, of the medial surface of the tibia is related to great saphenous nerve. And Come to the blood supply. This is the nutrient foramen, which is uh, the direction of the nutrient foramen is downwards. Uh, the nu from the nutrient foramen, the nutrient artery passes. Uh, this nutrient artery of the tibia is the largest nutrient artery of the body, which is a branch of posterior tibial artery. Okay, as the new as the direction of the nutrient foramen is downwards, so the the going end of the tibia is the upper end. The the fusion of the upper end, of the epiphysis of the upper end happens at the 17th to 18th years old. The tibia is ossified from one primary center and two secondary centers. The primary center is for the shaft, which uh, which is which appears at the seventh week of intrauterine life. The, uh, the secondary ossification center for the upper end uh, appears at birth and the secondary ossification center for the lower end appears after one or two years after birth. Now come to the joint. In the upper end, the condyles of the tibia articulates with the condyles of the femur, as you can see here, and forms the knee joint, which is a complex and compound variety of synovial joint. In the lower end, the lower end of the tibia, along with the lateral malleolus of the fibula, articulates with the upper and the lateral surface of the talus and forms the ankle joint, which is a hinge variety of synovial joint. And uh, as you can see here, the posterior aspect of the lateral condyle contains a fibular notch which articulates with the fibula and forms the superior tibiofibular joint which is a plain variety of synovial joint. And in the fibular notch, it articulates with the fibula and forms the, uh, forms the syndesmosis joint. And interosseous border joins with the interosseous membrane and forms a fibrous joint. So this is all about tibia. If you have any question, please comment in our comment box or you can contact us on Facebook. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. Thank you.